This is a lead. And thanks to its simpler nervous system, we're able to study it, especially the cooperation of neurons with each other in the network. But how do we get from a leech to the observation of the neural network? Here is a step-by-step -step guide. Step one, we need a leech. Step two, we dissect the nervous system and remove one of the 32 ganglion containing the neurons to record responses like action potentials. Step three, now we need glass marker electrodes with which we can apply electric current into cells to trigger the action potential. To study the entire network of the leech, we need voltage centers to die. Now, in step four, we need to dye the cells. Then, in step five, we need actually a working setup with a bunch of expensive stuff. Last but not least, we get the result. In the best case, we can analyze how the activity of the cells in the leech is related to each other. Let's start with the preparation of the leech. For that, we use a big beaker, fill it with ice cubes and water, as a precaution to avoid stress or pain to the leech. And we present leech on the rocks, shaken, not stirred. 30 minutes later. Here you can see our dissecting instrument. Different scissors to open the leech and different kind of tweezers to pin and to dissect the ganglion. Now we need to transfer the leech from the beaker to a wax bed and cover it with cold saline to maintain a normal cell function of the leech nervous system and now we can start dissecting the leech. At first, we make a small cut into the leech to cut the leech lengthwise. Then, we use a surgical forceps to open and unfold the skin along the cut and fix it in the wax bed with nails to get a view on the nervous system. And now, to the binoculars! All of the 32 body segments of the leech contain a ganglion. All ganglia are connected to their anterior and posterior neighbors. For our experiment, we isolate a single ganglion now we need to pin the ganglia with the stomach up on the silicon elastomer, which is covered in the petri dish. Ta-da! After the ganglion is pinned, we need to remove the glial sheath, because this sheath prevents that the dye molecules bind into the cell membrane. To the sheath the ganglion, we carefully lift the glial layer and cut across the entire ganglion. Then we cut along the edge to remove the first half of the glial layer and expose the underlying cells. We repeat this step with the other half of the glial layer. To record intracellular, we need electrodes. Next, we dye the ganglion. Therefore, we use the fluoro dye by Thermo Fisher. Since the dye is very light sensitive due to its phototoxicity, we work here under red light as soon as we use the dye. We already prepared the fluoro dye as it was described by Thermo Fisher Scientific. And we removed the saline in the petri dish with the ganglion and now replace it with 1500 microliters of the dye. Fluoro works by photoinduced electron transfer, or short PET. Here you can see a cell membrane with a slipid bilayer. And now the dye comes. It consists of a molecule membrane spanning wire, which you can see in black, an electron rich donor in brown, and a fluorescent receptor in green, which is anchored in the cell membrane. At hyperpolarizing potentials, the electric field is aligned anti parallel to the direction of the electron transfer resulting in efficient photoelectron transfer and quenched fluorescence. When now an event occurs and the cell depolarizes, the electric field aligns in the direction of the photoinduced electron transfer, decreasing the rate of electron transfers and increasing fluorescence when we shine light on it with the appropriate wavelength. Photons activate the dye. We can then record this change in the brightness of the cells with a camera. So shortly, depending on the voltage difference between the inside and the outside of the cell membrane, the dye will change its spectral properties and we get our results. 20 minutes later. After appropriate incubation, we remove the dye from the petri dish and wash out the ganglion with saline two to three times. Then we move the petri dish with the ganglion to the setup. We can now record and stimulate the cells with the chosen stimulation protocol and simultaneous recording of the intracellular response of the cell. During the recording itself, the ganglion is exposed to light of a certain wavelength in order to address the dye in the cells. This happens twice per trial, once during the stimulation of the cell and once without stimulation as a control to determine in the resulting visual data when a depolarization of the cell is present. But what results we get from the recording? Here you can see two images of the ganglion taken by the camera in the setup. On the left side you can see the snapshot that was taken in the beginning right before the recording started. On the right side you can see the first frame of the recording. And in both you can see very well each individual cell body in the ganglion. And when you look now on the right side and we go through all the frames of the recording, you can see by the flickering of the ganglion that there are cells active and that the network is responding to the stimulation that we're giving. And now in the end we only need to thank the leech for his work. And we release him into the leech heaven with the help of alcohol. Rest in peace.